Hello everyone, I'm Bishop Keith and it's lovely to welcome you to my Easter reflections on what does Easter actually mean for us today. I do hope that you'll continue to join me over the next few weeks as we continue to deepen our understanding of how the resurrection of Jesus impacts our lives today. Today I want to reflect on the passage in John 20 starting at verse 19. It deals with the disciples in the upper room on that very first Easter day after they had met the risen Jesus on the way back from the empty tomb. And then the second half of the passage reflects on the impact of Thomas and how we understand uh, belief or disbelief. So I do hope you enjoy this, this, this little reflection. Before we go into the text though, I do want to just reflect on the actual resurrection day itself. The disciples and the women did not expect Jesus to rise from the dead. No one expected Jesus to rise from the dead. It was a total surprise to everybody. And it's also important to understand that the first doubters to the resurrection were in fact the disciples. There was no vigil at the tomb with candles waiting for that third day for the disciples, for, 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 the, for, for Jesus to suddenly spring forth from the tomb. There was none of that. The women went to the tomb expecting to embalm Jesus or to continue the embalming process that they had commenced very briefly on Good Friday. They wanted to continue the embalming process to give him the burial that he deserved. So no one expected Jesus to rise from the dead. It was a total shock, a total surprise. The other thing about the resurrection is that the empty tomb did not convince anybody that Jesus had, had risen from the dead. The women who went there and saw the angels didn't believe it. And the disciples, when they heard from the women, didn't believe it. And when they went down to the tomb and saw the empty tomb and saw the, the, clo the clothes, the burial clothes lying in the tomb, they still didn't believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. It was just so unexpected. It was only when the women coming back from the empty tomb and the men coming back from the empty tomb encountered the risen Jesus. That's when they started to believe. And I make the emphasis on the word started because belief just didn't happen in an instant. It took time. It took days. It took weeks. And for some, I suppose that there was even the possibility that were, there was doubts even years later. Who knows? So to the, so to the text, John 20, 19. The disciples are in the upper room and the doors are locked. This is the room where they'd had the Last Supper with Jesus and they'd gone off to the, kid, uh, they'd gone off to the Garden of Gethsemane and all the events of Good Friday had then panned out. So here they are back in this upper room and the doors are locked for fear of the Jews. This is because as followers of Jesus who had been crucified, they were in grave danger still. There was still the possibility that they could be arrested, they could be tried and they also could be executed. So they're hiding out and Jesus suddenly appears in the midst of the room and says, peace be with you. What a great greeting to these disciples who are frightened and scared and unsure about what's going on. They are confused because they saw their, their leader, their beloved Lord, uh, die on the cross. They know he was put into a tomb, but now it seems that for some reason he is alive and it just seems so totally extraordinary that he would be alive. And so it's natural that there is confusion for them. But here he is now in the upper room saying, peace be with you. The Greek word is Irene and it comes from the Jewish word Shalom, which has a great depth of meaning simply other than um, everything's okay. It doesn't mean that. It means there is now a new way of understanding relationship. The relationship between God and humankind is now restored. And this beautiful peace that Jesus is giving to the disciples is based on this new restored relationship between humankind and God. Jesus is saying, it's okay. 
Don't be afraid. Don't be worried. Don't be concerned about the future. I am now risen from the dead. The world has changed, even though it doesn't look like it. The disciples would, of course, go out down into the marketplace and they'd see Caiaphas and Annas. They'd see some of the soldiers who would crucify Jesus. And it seemed like every, it would seem like to them that everything was still as it was before Good Friday and before that first Easter day. But the resurrection of Jesus has changed and transformed that in a unique way that they're only just starting to understand. And to, be, and to be frank, we continue to understand and to continue to reveal, have revealed for us how the resurrection impacts and changes our world this day. And so Jesus says to the disciples, peace be with you. Is your life in turmoil? Is your life being turned upside down? I certainly feel that way right at the moment. And the words of Jesus, the resurrected Jesus to the disciples have a great impact on me. Peace. Do not be afraid. My resurrection has changed the world. My resurrection has transformed life. My resurrection has the ability to transform your life as well. And so there is this new peace, this new resting that we can have in God, confident in the resurrection of Jesus. Now, of course, not all the disciples are there. Remember, Judas has died. Uh, and Thomas is not with them. So there's only 10 in the upper room. They see Thomas and they say, we have seen the Lord. And Thomas says, I'm not going to believe unless I can put my fingers in the imprints of his hands on, on the nails on his hands and his feet and put my hand in his side. Until I can do that, I'm just not going to believe. A week later, the 11, that's including Thomas, are now in the upper room. The doors are locked again, and Jesus appears to them, and again he says, peace be with you. What a great encouragement, again, to the disciples, who are still having great turmoil. This time, Thomas is there, of course, and Jesus comes up to Thomas and says, Thomas, put your fingers in my hands and my feet, and put your hand in my side. Thomas actually doesn't do that. He just simply falls to his knees, and he says, my Lord, and my God. And Jesus says, do you believe because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. This is a great encouragement, of course, for you and me, because we haven't seen Jesus, but we have the opportunity to believe that Jesus is truly raised from the dead. How do we do that? Well, we can be like Thomas and expect to see the actual risen Jesus. And that's really not going to happen. Or we can be like most of us today. We believe many things in this world without actually having seen it ourselves. But we believe that people who have seen things and have attested to them, we believe that they are true and so we believe. For example, I've never been into outer space and not seen that the world is in fact a ball, a sphere. But I believe and I believe that the photos that have come back from outer space are true and accurate reflections of what our world looks like. Of course, there are people in our world who still continue to believe that the world is flat and not a sphere and that it's all a conspiracy. I believe, of course, that men, that men walked on the moon. There are people who believe that it's a conspiracy. And so there will always be people who simply disbelieve. And remember that there is a difference between doubting and outright disbelief. This is an important distinction. Thomas never stopped believing who Jesus was. He simply doubted that the resurrection was true because it had never happened before. And who could blame him? Who could blame anyone to doubt the resurrection? But that's different to simply disbelieving that the res resurrection actually took place. And so the invitation for you and I is quite a simple one. Are we going to believe eyewitness testimony that Jesus is raised from the dead? And if we're going to believe that, then what does that mean for us? I think it means a couple of things. It means that I can live in this world despite all the dramas that are going on in the world 
that are going on in the world in Ukraine and in Europe, uh, in, the, in the South China Sea, uh, in our own nation. I can not worry about those because Jesus is raised from the dead and it means that death is not the end. I can also have great hope and trust in my own personal life, even though my own personal life is in turmoil because of things that are going on in my life. Jesus' resurrection brings peace. Jesus brings peace personally to those who believe and trust in him. This is a great comfort to me, and it's a great comfort to those who come to believe and trust in the Lord Jesus. I still have doubts. I still have questions. I still have concerns. But that doesn't matter. I can continue to explore all those with Jesus in my prayer life in my relationship with God, it, through church, through however I want to express my relationship with God, I am able to continue to delve deeper into the mysteries of the resurrected Jesus. I've been a follower of the Lord Jesus for 45, 50 years, and I continue to learn new and exciting things about Jesus. I continue to learn new and exciting things about what the resurrection actually means for me and for the world. It means that I've got to engage with God. It means that I've got to believe that Jesus is raised from the dead. And in that believing, not understanding. Remember, it's about belief. It's about faith. It's not about knowledge. It's not about, can I write a, can I write a sermon about it? Or can I write a paper about it? It's about, do I believe that Jesus is truly raised from the dead? This Easter, I hope that you, in whatever situation you are in, you might have the opportunity to put your faith and trust in the risen Jesus. And as you put your faith and trust in the risen Jesus, that you might also be able to, despite doubts, despite fears, continue to explore with God what the resurrection might mean for you and for the world in which you live and move and have your being. The Lord be with you.